Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. Welcome. We're going to talk today about Cities of Harn. So let's first of all start talking about the original Cities of Harn, which is this product. Now, there were multiple printings of this. There's a version with a black cover, which I believe to be otherwise identical. Um, in the middle, we have a large number of color fold-out maps that you are intended to remove from the book. Um, this is my copy where the center contents are not removed. I have another one where they are and they're in a box somewhere. Um, but this was the original product. Um, so for the sake of uh, comparison, we are going to take a look at the city of Tashal in the original cities of Harn, which you can see is a six-page article. Now, there's a, there's a lot here, um, six pages plus the color map, I should say, but there's a black and white Game Master map here, which contains a lot of different building descriptions, numbered buildings, that kind of thing, the kind of thing you would expect in a fantasy city product. Uh, but the entire article, there's a lot of detail in here, don't get me wrong, but the entire article is six pages. So let us take a look then at the new Cities of Harn product for Tishal. So first of all, one of the things that you got with the Kickstarter was this Cities and Towns article, which is a kind of explanation of how Cities and Towns work on Harn, um, but also how the articles themselves work. So we're not going to go through anything line by line here, because otherwise this will take a gazillion years to do. Uh, but this is an eight-page article. Um, here's the island of Harn. This, this is is the seven human cities of Harn. There is one additional real city that is the city of Azadmir, the dwarven city. There's there's a there's an elven city too, but it's somewhat less impressive architecturally, in my opinion. So um, credits on this. Uh, N. Robin Crosby, Tom Doglish, and Edwin King. The artist is Richard Lushek. Um, so we have some basic summaries of the seven cities here. We have the city of Aliath in the kingdom of Kanday. This is a free town, which, which means something. It means that the city has a specific charter, uh, on its own. And the, uh, the, the people that rule the city, which is generally like an, uh, an council of aldermen type of arrangement, um, only report or they're only responsible to the king, um, the king of Kande in this case. Uh, we have Cherifir, which is the capital of the kingdom of Meldarine. We have Korinon, the capital of the Thardic Republic. This is the largest city on Harn. That was the one with the double page spread in here. And we'll see the map when we get to it um, in a future episode. We're not going to do Korinon today. Um, we have the city of Golotha in the kingdom of Rathim. This is a great city. It's, it's, it's incredibly degenerate. It's run by the church of Morgath for the most part, um, with some other evil churches, uh, having a voice as well. It is not a happy place to be. And therefore it is a fantastic place for a campaign. I had some mem real memorable moments, uh, in a, a, one of my own campaigns in Golotha. We have the city of Sharon, which is in the Thardic Republic as well. Uh, this is kind of a stronghold of, uh, the Church of Halia, which is the, who is the pleasure goddess of the Harnic Pantheon. Uh, if you would like to see a video about the Harnic Pantheon, please let me know in the comments. Uh, we have Tishal, which is part of the Kingdom of Kaldor. That's when we're going to take a closer look here. Uh, we have the, the free town of Thay, which is also in the Kingdom of Meldarine. Um, and then here we talk about governments of towns, the, how the town is ruled, how the law works in the town, what the buildings are made of, urban geography, um, larger towns consist of neighborhoods or quarters. The urban poor, who make up most of the population, tend to rent rooms in multi-story tenements in slum districts, for example. So the towns are, are medieval towns, right? They are, they are crap holes for the most part. Um, we get a discussion of guilds. Guilds are important uh, in Harn. There is a, a relatively complex network of guilds that are present on Harn. Uh, and maybe we'll get to those in a future video as well. Uh, taxes and tolls. This is the, the classic traveler thing of what is here in the world to soak away the player character's money. Um, this falls into that category. And that's the end of this article. So let's take a look at Tushal. And remember, six pages originally. You will notice if you look at the bottom of this screen that the new version of this article runs to 70 pages. Now, the print's bigger, um, but there's also a significant amount of additional material in here. Uh, other than it's also full color and super pretty. So we've got the basic information. We have history of this, the, uh, the city of Tushal, including a timeline. Let's see how much we have. Uh, again, uh, Robin Crosby, Ed King, John Scamato, 
and Richard Luschek, and then plans by uh, Jock Anderson, Tom Doglish, Patrick Nilsson, and Bill Bean, and I'm not going to read all the contributors. Uh, but it says here, some material in this Harn was originally published in Cities of Harn and Son of Cities. So Son of Cities was a book just like this, except it gave you additional pages in the city articles with additional building descriptions and stuff like that. Um, so we're still in the history here. Uh, here is a player, is a non-player character who is present in Tishal. Here is the politics of the town. Uh, this is the specifics of the government of Tishal. The, the details of the town government in the cities and towns article is generic. It generally applies. This will explain where it is different in Tishal specifically. Uh, here's a cool little thing. The toxin bell. Uh, hanging in the highest tower of Care Elend is used to mark the passage of the day. So that's a little bit of local color there, which is pretty cool. Um, here are the, the city aldermen that handle civic administration. Uh, and you have information, uh, not a huge amount of information and not a crippling amount of information where you have so much information that you have to memorize or you get it wrong and mess it up. There's, there's enough here to, to let your imagination run with actual play in this place. Uh, and that's generally true of Harn. Uh, there's some economics information that's particularly important for Tishal because it is on the um, the crossroads of multiple major trade routes. It even says here the Salt Route, the Salt Route, the Fur Road, the Silver Way, and the Jenin Trail. Um, even though it's a landlocked city, I think there's a stream, but uh, even though it's a landlocked city and not a big port, it's on these four major land trade routes. Um, plus we have here, uh, we have some taxes information. We have the buildings in this city by building type. So we have this toll house, we have gates, we have Care Elend, which is going to be the royal citadel of, uh, the king in Tishal. Um, the bonding house and granaries, which is a civic administration thing. Harbor master and sheriff's guards. We have all the guild halls here. You'll notice that we do have no less than three different buildings marked as part of the Guild of Arcane Lore. For those who feel that Harn is an irreparably low magic place, we'll talk about that when we get to it. Um, we do have temples. Uh, we have temples to seven deities here, which is a lot. Um, of these, the Church of Nave is going to be proscribed because it's proscribed basically everywhere on Harn. Uh, that might not be true in the Thardic Republic or Rathim, although it, it might be. Um, they, but it's always underground, even if it's not illegal. Um, but we have the Temple of Halea, the, uh, a Temple of Ilvir. There's a lot of different little clerical orders of Ilvir that aren't unified. Or Ilvir is weird. We'll talk about Ilvir when we get to the deities of Harn. Um, Lorani, who is the sort of Lady of Paladins. Peony, who is the harvest and mother goddess. Uh, Sarayin, who is sort of the Viking god of battle and rage, and Save Knorr, who is the god of the sort of indifferent god of knowledge. Uh, there's there's multiple orders. The, the churches of these deities are not necessarily unified. I'm getting a little too far into this now. I should save this for the the uh, Gods of Harn video. So we'll uh, we'll set uh, that aside for now. Uh, it does mention that the city has no temples to Agric Morgath or Saim. Um, uh, worship of Agric Morgath or Nave is published by punishable by death. Um, so we have a great summer fair. This is the big trading fair because Tashal sits at the nexus of these four different trade routes. So we have a big discussion of that. And there's a whole bunch of things going on here. It's a, it's a big festival type thing as well. Um, there's even a uh, random encounters table for the fair. Um, um, and a calendar, an actual calendar. Uh, so here we have the, the city locations. These are the districts of, uh, the city. Uh, we have Care Elend, which is, the district is dominated by the castle and the royal government. Um, Mavenel is sort of the temple district. Uh, Heru Gate is a district of craftsmen, laborers, and freemen in manual trades. Calabine is, uh, skilled artisans and rich merchants. Um, working poor live in East Side. Mangai Square is going to be the commerce center. The Mangai is sort of the uh, overall guild council. Medric, uh, let's see, bustles with the middle class. Uh, nobles and wealthy guildsmen live in Haldana. This odiferous section of the city is dominated by the Clothiers Guild. This is Weaver Town. Odiferous because, uh, probably there is a tannery there and tannery, uh, Tanneries are notoriously stinky. 
um, and Lirin Village. This is actually located out here outside the walls. Um, and Artoan, which is also outside the walls up here. So there's actually a little bit of somewhat urbanization just outside the city walls. The entire contents of the city is not necessarily contained in these walls, although it's fairly clean in that respect in the case of Tishal in particular. So let's keep going. Uh, we have, we're getting into building descriptions here. So here's, uh, here's some information on the bridge. Here's the castle. Uh, we'll see what we have, uh, what else we have here. But you can see that section A is like the government building. So we'll scroll back up here. For, ah, it's kind of a long way up. Yeah, see, government buildings are section A, or is that district? I think that might be district. It is. Um, but there is some correspondence between district and um, function of the building. So let's see. We're still in here. We're still, we're looking at the castle now, actually. So there's uh, floor plans of the castle. And you'll see, see this in a lot of Harn products, too, are, are, are quite detailed floor plans. There's no grid on these, but that's because, like actual buildings, they don't necessarily conform to a grid. You can see that one of the towers here is sort of offset from the rest of the uh, the, the, the castle. Um, so we're getting uh, quite a lot of detail on this. Now, how useful, I think, is natural to ask, um, is this floor plan of the royal castle of the king of Caldor. Well, I mean, maybe I'll use it and maybe you won't. Uh, but we'll see that there's other floor plans that may be, might come up more often. We're still in uh, royal castle here. Uh, here's the roof. So a lot of details. And here we're here now we're in um, the Mavenel district. I'm specifically looking. Here's the temple of Save Knorr has collected dozens of books and artifacts from the time of Lothrim. You might recall that Lothrim is Lothrim the Foul Spawn, or he was an evil sorcerer who opened up a gate to some other place and brought the Gargoon to Harn. Uh, they have since been a scourge of the entire island. Um, Enclave of the Holy Oak will be the College of Heralds. And we have a uh, floor plan for that. Uh, here's a quick, large, and elaborate temple of Peony. Uh, here's the Heru Gate District. Now we do have, I want to go through this a little more slowly because um, C3, Companions of the Red Griffin. Let's see here. So it looks like this is a mercenary company that has like an office here. This looks amusing. Their antics have drawn the attention of Sir Haldare Venera, Constable of Caroland. So they're basically, they've set up shop here because they expect fighting to break out at any time. You may recall from the Caldor video that there is an elderly and somewhat sickly king of Caldor who it is thought will drop dead at any moment. Um, he has thus far not dropped dead for like 20 years. Uh, but when he does die, he does not have legitimate heirs. So there is expected to be a fuss about what happens when he does pass. Uh, let's see. Looking for the Guild of Arcane Lore. There's a tutor poet. I thought there was one under C here. Yeah, maybe not. Well, rest assured that there are multiple facilities of the Guild of Arcane Lore here in the building. Now, those are not magic shops, but um, they're nevertheless, they're Guild of Arcane Lore places. That doesn't necessarily mean they're wizards either. By the way, they may just be researchers of, of actual arcane lore and, and not actual wizards. But uh, there is an actual chantry of the Shek Pavar here. Here's the Temple of Saryin. Here's the Temple of Ilver. This is the Order of the Yellow Hand. Uh, the Order believes that Lothram hid a sacred tome, the scant illumination of visit, vision, in Kalapan Anuz and have sought it for more than five centuries. Okay, that's interesting. So again... Uh, plot, plot hooks on every page here. You, you like literally step in randomly to page 33 here and read about the Temple of Ilver, and there's a plot hook here. Picking a different one. The Iron Bell has long been considered. The, uh, let's not do it. Let's not do it. In. Inns are boring. Um, let's go to the locksmith. Harain. Harain of Festhall mostly builds padlocks. Jer of Merilim 
recently approved Harain's franchise, which is sort of a certification by the guild that says you can go into business now, uh, and sends simpler work to him. Harain has one apprentice, a buxom niece named Nessa, who likes to tease customers when Harain is absent. Innkeeper Perla plans on recruiting Nessa to work as one of her prostitutes. There's a plot hook right there. Um, I, I, it, that's generally, oh, wow, look at this. Uh, so this is like, um, that is generally a feature of Harn that there are, that the whole text is riddled with plot hooks that you can use in your adventures. Um, so here we have what looks like an entire, like, little neighborhood of shops and stuff. Uh, we have a salter here, a perfumer, a mercantiler, who's like a general merchant, general store type person. Um, more mercantilers, a lexigraph, lexigrapher, lexigrapher, potters, glass workers, locksmiths. Uh, here's just some market stalls. Uh, the litigants. The, there's a guild of litigants who are the lawyers guilds, which is kind of an awesome thing. Um, there's lexi, uh, lex, ugh, lexigraphers, salters, hide workers. Um, so we've got like literal plans here of all these different shops and stuff. Um, and this, you know, can be used, these can be used generically, uh, for whatever shops wherever. Um, even if we don't necessarily have, sh uh, floor plans for the building your players are in at the moment. Uh, this is what, uh, this is the Mercantiler's Hall. So this is the Mercantiler's Guild, uh, probably the most influential and prosperous guild hall on Harn. Uh, which is perhaps not surprising considering the trade routes and all that. So you've got complete floor plans of this place. A lot of businesses in this entire district, which should not be surprising. Um... There's the bonding house. There, there is a little bit of a port here. So there's a river, the called river, but uh, it's not, it's not like an ocean port. Uh, here's the temple of Halea containing naked people. Um, it's a big sort of, is that a seven pointed feature? It is, which is interesting. If it were, if it were an octagon, that would be more characteristic of the, the church of Agric, who is the evil god of fire and war. Uh, more floor plans. What is this facility? Uh, okay, this is another inn. It looks like, uh, and again, we got a lot of information on the inns, which is fine because, you, you know, you can't have too much on inns specifically. Here's a charcoaler. Uh, Lorainian mausoleum. There's an, there's a, like a mausoleum here. That's H6. That's over here. We're going to keep going through here. We're on like page 50 of 70. There's a lot more stuff going on here in this, uh, in the city. So as you can see, we're going to, you know, kind of buzz through the rest of it. Oh, here's a, a cellar, quite a labyrinthine cellar at that point. Uh, Halime of Falesh here, who runs this inn, is the guild master of the Lea Kaver in Tishal. The Lea Kaver are the thieves guild of Harn. So it's perhaps not at all surprising that there's a labyrinth in his basement. Um, Here's the Temple of Lorani. This is Spear of Shattered Sorrow. They are, they are one of the groups, um, either involved in or countenancing the, uh, the nasty business that the Loranian Church is involved in on the mainland. Uh, in, uh, uh, in the Meldoreen area, actually. Uh, more Temple of Lorani. Most impressive Temple of Lorani on Harn was the dream of one man, Thomas of Bakith who came to Harn from Trierzen in 408 as a young priest. A natural leader, he quickly rose to the rank of Abbot of Zuen and became Saralon of Tashal in 424. So one of the things that you'll see in Gods of Harn, it are the, and we're going to get into that, um, it are the priestly ranks in the you know native language spoken here. Weavertown, Dyer's Alley. Wasn't sure if that was somebody uh, rocking on his chair or somebody getting knifed. There's the Temple of Nave, which, of course, has tunnels, secret tunnels and stuff underneath it. Here are the villages outside. Um, we have this Thespians Guild, or troop of Thespians, anyway. There's even an article on the woods. Orgail Wood. This is one of the few areas where townsfolk may collect drop wood filled with large rocks, gnarled trees, and mossy shadows. Smugglers use the wood as a rendezvous, and some disappear. And here's where the, the gibbets are, where they hang, put the executed criminal corpses. 
Um, and here we have the underground. So another re- uh, f- interesting feature of Tashal is that there it, there is an actual network of underground tunnels under the city. Uh, these are used by the Lia Kaver. These are used by the Temple of Nave. They're used by smugglers and stuff like that, but they are not fully charted. Um, here we get back to the maps. This shows us the tunnel system, and we can see that here are the sewers. Here's the Lia Kaver tunnels. Here's the Navian tunnels. Here's the tunnels of the refugees of Ilver, however that works. Here's a royal escape tunnel. Uh, there's even an underground stream that comes in from the call. That's pretty interesting. Uh, so we can see where all these things go. And then it's up to you as the game master to kind of detail the, the individual features of these uh, temples. Uh, here we have the the uh, immediate environs of Tashal, which is actually pretty cool. This is an excerpt from the Atlas Harnica map J5, and we can see this uh, this sort of yellow. I'm not really sure how well you're going to make this out on the video, but this sort of yellow is going to be the cultivated land. Uh, but you can see that there's a lot of of settlement around here. Okay. Um, Quirina and Heru are going to be keeps. Tarun is going to be a keep. All the rest of these, these little, the hollow squares and circles are going to be manors. Uh, the X, there's a key for, for this. Uh, the X might represent a temple or a religious, uh, uh, fief holding. That is possible. Oh, and here's a list of related products, which is also pretty cool. Uh, and then we have the player map. So this is the one that you are, um, encouraged to either hand out to the players or photocopy and hand out to the players uh, more likely. Uh, but these are in color nowadays. There were black and white ones in, in these old ones. Um, but that's the city of Tashal. As you can see, there's a lot here. Um, I don't know if this is the longest of the um, of the articles or not, although I'm going to check Coronan because if any of them is longer, Coronan's actually a good deal shorter. Um Let's look at Galatha's 47 pages. There's a lot in this 47 pages, okay? So there's a lot here to like. Um, this stuff is all, again, still available through uh, DriveThruRPG and through Columbia Games. So I would encourage you to check uh, check these out in those places if you're finding this interesting or you need a fantasy city. It's not that difficult to drop these right in. You might have to like replace the heads of the city with something more appropriate to your campaign. But otherwise... Um, you can absolutely drop this right into whatever campaign if you're not using Harn, but you should be. So I want to thank you for watching. Um, if you have enjoyed the video, please like it. Leave me any questions below. If you'd like to see whatever you'd like to see in the future, um, please uh, mention, uh, but pertaining to Harn specifically, but whatever, that's cool too. Um, leave a comment below. I would also like to direct you to the um, Ardwolf's Lair Patreon, which is linked in the video description as well. So please check that out. Consider becoming a patron if, uh, if that's a possibility for you. Again, thanks for watching. Happy gaming. and I'll see you next time.